Hey everyone, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. Today I'm going to show you how to change out the nozzle on your FDM 3D printer. Now, even if you don't experience a clog, it's a good idea to change your nozzle ever, periodically simply from use. Uh, the nozzle is made of brass. That's a fairly soft metal. And the filaments we feed through these machines are an abrasive. That means they're going to erode that nozzle opening over time. As that nozzle opening enlarges, the tolerances are thrown off and your print quality will decrease. So, how often should you change your nozzle? That kind of depends what you're running through it. If you're just running PLA, PLA is not as abrasive as many other filaments. So if it's just PLA, you should probably only change your nozzle maybe once a year. If you're running ABS or nylons or anything else that erode the nozzle at a faster rate, you may be changing them every three to six months. It just depends when you see that degradation in the quality of the prints, that's usually your sign to go ahead and change the nozzle. Now, in addition to that, I am gonna show you how to change out the Bowden tube and the insulation on the Ender 3, the, uh, the insulation that's around the heater block, I'm gonna show you how to replace it with something a little more effective. So, as always, everything I talk about in these videos is linked in the description. Also, if you need help, if you have problems that you need troubleshooting on your printer, questions, uh, you can post them in the comments here, or even better, join us over on Facebook in our Dragonlock Facebook group. We have thousands of members with a lot of 3D printer experience. We have people posting on there every day asking for assistance and we get you answers right away. So again, that link is in the description. Please uh, sign up for that group. Um, I think that about covers it. Let's get started with changing nozzles out. Okay, before we get started, let's take a look at the parts of your hot end, talk a little bit about what they do, and so you understand what I'm talking about as we go through this video. Okay, starting at the bottom is your nozzle. That's the part we're gonna replace today. Above that, it screws into the heater block. Now, this is the part of the hot end that is actually intended to be hot. Uh, into it, on the right side, go two sets of wiring. One is for your thermistor, which is your temperature sensor. The other wiring is for your heater core, and that is actually what's going to be heating up the heater block. Now, immediately above that is the heat break. This is just a very thin piece of tubing, and it's designed to transmit as little heat as possible up away from the heater block. You don't want heat going up beyond the heater block because that can soften your filament, cause it to reach its glass transition point, which means it goes from being a total hard solid to having some flex and play with it and um, beginning to soften up. What does that mean? Well, when you do retractions, you could actually stretch it. When you uh, are feeding it, you can actually cause it to uh, compress outwards and cause a jam. So heat traveling up above the heater block is bad, and the heat break helps uh, eliminate that. Now, immediately above that is your heat sink. Uh, those fins simply allow air to travel in between them and help dissipate the heat even further. Uh, above that is your Bowden tube coupler that holds your Bowden tube in place. Now, anytime you are using a wrench or pliers to hold the heater block in place, because you have to hold it still, if you twist it when you're twisting the nozzle, you can break the connection with the heat break. The heat break is very thin and it is very fragile. So anytime we work on the nozzle, we hold the heater block in place with pliers. And you always hold it front to back for this reason. This is the thermistor wiring and the heater cartridge wiring. It is extremely fragile and damaging Either one can create a potential fire hazard. They're more often than not, it's damaging the thermistor. So you always grip this heater block front and back away from these wires. Now, I need to stress the, something very important here. This thermistor screw is not intended to be tight. It's only intended to be rotated down until it touches the wiring for the thermistor and not any tighter. If you crank down on this screw, if it looks loose or something and you're tightening it, you're going to damage that wiring and cause bad readings from the thermistor and that can create a fire hazard. This screw is not intended to be cranked down on and muscled in tight. It's only intended to be rotated in until it is touching that wiring and then you stop. That is simply to keep the wiring from backing out. It's not intended to be muscled down so don't ever do that. It will create, it will damage that wiring and create a bad reading which will create a fire hazard. So again, you only rotate that in until it's touching those wiring and then you stop no further. Okay, so now that I'm done with the safety warning, the last thing I want to show you is the actual inside of your uh, the 
heater block and the uh, heat sink. What's going on here is your Bowden tube actually feeds all the way down through the heat sink, through the heat break, to the heater block, and butts up against the back of the nozzle. A lot of times, printing problems you have, such as under extrusion and uh, excessive stringing, is caused by this Bowden tube slipping away and not having a good seal with that nozzle and creating a void that molten filament can fill and cause drag and things like that. So if you're experiencing those things, one of the easiest and first places you should start is making sure this Bowden tube is fully seated. So now that we're done with that, let's actually get started with changing your nozzle out. All right, let's get started here. We're going to start by turning the machine on. And in the LCD menu, you're going to go and heat this thing up. So go to prepare, or actually you're going to go to tune, go to temperature, select nozzle, and crank that up to about 205, 210 degrees. You want this nice and hot, both for taking the nozzle out and putting it back in. Between those two steps, we are going to cool this back down so we can handle the hot end safely, but we'll get to that in a minute. Next up, let's clip the zip ties off that are connecting the Bowden tube to the wiring harness. I want to take that Bowden tube out and inspect it since there is a clog, and I do not want to risk yanking on that wire harness, so just clip these off. Always do it on the side of the tube. Clip up against the white tube. Do not clip against that black nylon sheath, just in case you slip and would nick the wiring. If you nick the outside of the Bowden tube, you have not done anything that is a problem. Depress the couplers on the Bowden tube on each end. Pull that Bowden tube out. Let's take a look at it. Uh, it doesn't show up there, but it is discolored, so I'm going to replace this. Now, Bowden tube is cheap. It's like five bucks for five feet on Amazon. Get yourself a tube cutter. This is essential. I've got a link for this in the description. It's like six or seven bucks. This will cut your Bowden tube at a perfect 90 degree angle with a nice clean cut. And all you're doing is you're rotating that black knob a little bit, biting the blade into the tube and rotating it around. Every turn you bite the blade a little bit further and just keep rotating it until you've cut all the way through. Uh, this is going to ensure you get a perfect seal between the end of this tube and the back of your nozzle when you replace it. So don't skimp on this. Get that tube cutter. All right, next up, we're going to take these two bolts out on the hot end shroud. Now, remember, this is all very hot. Your hot end is 210 degrees. Your cooling fan in this shroud is spinning. So be careful. Keep your fingers away from all of these things. Take these two bolts out. Once you've done that, you're going to need to drape your fan shroud up over the x-axis extrusion. This is going to keep it from just hanging free and putting stress on the wiring. It's still going to be spinning. Don't worry about it. If you hang it like this, it's not going to you know, nick anything or cause any problems. So just put it there. Next up, get an old toothbrush and take this opportunity to clean your hot end off. It is going to be dusty. This fan, every time you run it, is blowing dust on that heat sink. So clean it off. Don't let that build up. Um, again, you don't have to do this a lot, but if you're going to go ahead and take the shroud off, take the opportunity to do it. Now, anytime you are taking on or taking off a nozzle, you want to grip the heater block so it does not twist and put stress on the wiring or the heat break. So always grip it with a pair of pliers front and back, never left and right because you don't want to accidentally uh, mess those wires up. So grip it front and back. Use the wrench that came with the printer to start loosening your nozzle. Once you get it about halfway out, switch over to some needle nose pliers so you can grip it safely. Remember, this thing is still 210 degrees. If you grab that nozzle when it falls out, it is going to burn you. So needle nose pliers, Finish taking that nozzle the last few turns, and then you're going to want to just put it somewhere safe to cool down. And get, grab this, and yep, nice big clog in it. So um, anytime you're doing this, just change the nozzle out. They're 90 cents. Don't mess with trying to clear a clog. Put a fresh one on. All right, you're going to go through your LCD menu, select cool down, let the machine reach room temperature, and turn it off. Uh, the reason you want to do this is it'll help putting the new nozzle back in. 
while this thing has cooled off, I've taken a look at my insulation, and mine's looking pretty flaky, so I'm going to replace mine. You can skip this step. You don't have to do this. This has nothing to do with unclogging your nozzle, but I'm going to go ahead and do mine in case this is an upgrade any of you would like to do. Now, the, st the stock insulation is just held in place with some yellow Captain tape. You just cut through it with an X-Acto knife. Always cut on the left-hand side away from the wires, and just go in. Uh, fingernail, old toothbrush, whatever. Clean that old insulation off. It's getting pretty flaky on mine. I'm going to throw a silicon sock on this. Uh, it's just going to do a little bit better job. It's a good, cheap upgrade to do. I've got a link in the description for these from Amazon. Uh, just get all that cleaned off. That's what your heater block should look like once the insulation is stripped off. And there it is. It's just a little piece of uh, uh, silicon. It's just going to slip on over your uh, heater block there. You don't need any tools or anything. It's pre-fitted to your, the link I have is for one that's pre-fitted to your specific hot end. And that just slips up over. It has a little cutout on the side for the wiring. And it's a really cheap, easy upgrade for your hot end. And then uh, once this is done, make sure it fits on there good. All right. Okay, I am taking it back off, and what I'm going to do now is put my new, and again, this is still at room temperature, I'm going to put my new nozzle in. Now, thread that up by hand most of the way. Just get it up. Uh, you can just finger tighten it. Then, turn your machine on. Go back to your LCD menu and get this sucker cranked back up to 210 degrees. Uh, the reason you want this done is it's going to ensure a tighter uh, fit for the nozzle if it is heated while you're putting it on. Also, it's going to need to be preheated uh, for seating the Bowden tube and putting the filament through to make sure we've got a good seal. So, again, grip that heater block front and back with your pliers. Using the wrench that came with the machine, tighten the nozzle up. Now, once you get it tight, back it off three quarters of a turn. Why am I doing that? Well, that's going to help us get a really nice tight fit between the nozzle and the Bowden tube when it is inserted. So this thing has been loosened three quarters of a turn. I'm now going to insert my Bowden tube into the hot end assembly. And again, this is hot, so be careful. Uh, get those fingers away from that heater block and nozzle area. So just inserting the Bowden tube down. Being careful not to burn myself because that is something I would definitely do. And once it's touching the back of that nozzle, grip your heater block with pliers again, front and back, and finish tightening that nozzle three quarters of a turn. Now, this loosening and tightening trick, don't do it more than three quarters of a turn. If you have too much gap and you crank down on that nozzle, it's going to crush the end of your Bowden tube or mis have it misshapen to where it has a problem feeding. Three quarters of a turn is plenty to get a tight fit. Now, I put my silicon sock back on there. Tightened up my uh, fan shroud, got that back on, and it's time to feed some filament through here and see if we got this right. So this is preheated to 210, don't forget. You're just manually depressing the lever on your extruder, feeding the filament in manually, and there we go. We're getting some fresh filament out of that nozzle. So uh, if yours looks like this, congratulations, you have successfully changed out a clogged nozzle on your machine. All right, one last thing. This has nothing to do with the nozzle change, but it's a, a fix I just did to my machine uh, that I noticed when I was doing the nozzle change. And when I put this fan cover back on, I noticed there's a little bit of wear on the insulator for the wiring for the heater core block, and it's being caused by rubbing against the fan shroud. Now, to fix this, it's really easy. Just take some Captain tape. Captain is simply high temperature tape. I have a link for it in the description from Amazon. And I'm just going to wind this around that wiring in that spot where it's hitting the back of the shroud. Just a couple layers of the Captain tape. And it's going to act as a barrier. So again, it has nothing to do with your clog nozzle, but it's a very simple fix to do. And I just put two or three layers wrapping around the wiring here. Just keeps that wiring together better, too. There's another piece lower that Creality did. And as you can see here, it acts as a buffer between the wiring harness and the back of that fan shroud where it was rubbing against it. So that does it for this video. Please click the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. And thank you for watching.